Welcome to hierarchical clustering. This is part one, and in this video, we cover all the key concepts and illustration of two popular algorithms for hierarchical clustering. First, let's start off with a motivation on why we need a new clustering method, considering we already have seen k means clustering. Check out my k means video if you haven't seen it. The first limitation of k means is we need to input the number of clusters for the algorithm to start. If you haven't seen the data set before, how can this be known in advance? And if the number of clusters need to be changed, then we have to rerun the entire clustering algorithm, and this can be time consuming if you have a large data set. The second limitation is if your data clusters have parent-child relationship, then it cannot be represented. Third, there's an equal variance assumption in the underlying math for k-means, and is that realistic for your data to have equal variance for all your clusters? Lastly, the data generating process is assumed to produce, be produced by Gaussian spherical distributions. And what if your data is not compliant with that assumption? Then k-means is not an ideal solution. Now that we understood the limitation, let us now see how the hierarchical cluster looks. Given a data set, we are going to transform it into a hierarchy of clusters. In this picture, data point 1, data point 2, and data point 3 are forming a cluster 1, shown in green arrow, and data point 6 is merged with it, but at a different level in hierarchy, shown in red arrow. This diagram is called a dendrogram, and we'll see a lot more detail about this later in the video. But let's ask first the question, how do we build this hierarchy from our data? Let's gain an intuition how the algorithm would work for building in the hierarchy from the data. There are two major types. And the first approach we're going to see is bottom-up approach, formerly called agglomerative hierarchical clustering. First, we take all our data points, consider each data point itself as a cluster. This is step one. Next, we transform and start forming clusters between two of the nearest neighbors. This is step two. Then, we take all the newly formed clusters and create parent clusters for the nearby clusters. This is step three. Finally, we continue to do this recursively Till we have one cluster that contains all the subclusters formed part of the algorithm. And that is step four. So to summarize, we started with a pairwise distance between data points, and we recursively merged all nearby data points and clusters, and we did a smooth transition of going from k singleton clusters to a single cluster with all the n data points. Now that the intuition on the agglomerative clustering is clear, let's turn our attention to the second approach. The second approach is top-down approach, also formally called the divisive hierarchical clustering. Here, first, we take all our data points together and consider them as one big cluster. This is step one. Next, we iteratively start dividing the data into multiple groups. In this case, we divide the data into two subgroups within the big cluster that we formed in step one. Then we continue to form subclusters for nearby data points, which is step three. And we do this recursively till each data point is a cluster on its own, which is step four. To summarize, we start with a single cluster and repeatedly find the next cluster to split. We split the selected cluster into two clusters and we continue till all data points are clusters themselves, which is also called singleton clusters. Now that the intuition on divisive hierarchical clustering is clear, let's turn our attention to important concepts underpinning the clustering algorithms. 
there are three concepts that form the foundation for the algorithms. The first is the distance. Considering hierarchical clustering is focused on pairwise distances, we need to define how to measure distance between two data points in our data set. For real value variables and continuous variables, we can choose between Euclidean, cosine, correlation, Manhattan, and Minskovsky, Mahalanobis, etc., etc. For discrete variables, we may choose between Hamming, Jacquard, etc., etc. Check out my distance measures video that goes into a deep dive on all these formulations and helps you choose the right distance for your given problem. Moving on, the next concept is linkage. This refers to how to compute distance between two clusters using distances of contained data points. Formally, let's start some definitions. Given distance dij between data point xi and xj, and given two clusters c1 and c2, how to calculate d of c1 and c2, which means the distance between cluster c1 and cluster c2. Using distances between their contained data points and following a monotonicity property. Now, monotonicity property is a fancy way to say we want to combine similarities and we don't want the similarities to go up. That is, as we go up the hierarchy, it gets more and more dissimilar. Okay. There are four different ways, at least, to calculate linkage. The first method is called a single linkage method. What it formally is, is that we are calculating the minimum distance between clustering clusters using data points in the boundaries of the two clusters. In this picture, if red dots and blue dots are referring to two different clusters, and we calculate distance between them using single linkage, see the, the data point that actually connected it. And that distance, that line, is the distance between the two clusters. This method, even though it's simple, it encourages the system to generate thin and long clusters. So that is something for us to keep in mind. The second method we will see is the complete linkage method, which is calculating the distance between max of the data points which are falling on the boundaries of two different clusters. In this picture, if red dots and blue dots are referring to two different clusters. We calculate the distance between those two points marked in the diagram to be the distance between the clusters. This method encourages the system to generate very compact clusters. The third method of linkage we shall evaluate is called the average linkage, which is calculating the average between each point in cluster 1 with the average distance between cluster 2. In this picture, red and blue dots are referring to two different clusters, and if we calculate distance between them using average linkage, we would actually be calculating for each data point on a pairwise basis. This method is computationally more complex, but it does give us stable clusters. The fourth method for generating linkage is called the Ward's distance linkage. And what this fancy formula really is doing is it's referring to how much will the sum of squared increase when we merge two clusters. This method brings very intuitively the centroid concept into the linkage measure. And in the formula above, MC1 and MC2 are centroids of the cluster C1 and C2. This method generates robust clusters and is computationally more complex than other methods. Now that we have covered the linkage calculation method, let's review the next concept, which is the dendrograms. The dendrograms are visually representing the linkage matrix, and it is a binary tree with leaf node representing data points, which is shown in red arrows in the diagram. And its internal nodes, which is shown in green arrow, is a union set of representation of two children that it has been merged. And the height indicates similarity. 
At any height, a horizontal cut could be made for extracting limited clusters. For example, if I cut via a horizontal line at 0.4 as shown by the blue line, then only four clusters will be extracted from this dendrogram. Now that we have seen what dendrogram is, let's quickly summarize what we have covered so far. Hierarchical clustering will help turn our data into hierarchy of clusters based on their distances. The key features are we do not need to provide the number of clusters ahead of time. It represents the complete structure of all possible clusters for our data and is useful for representing relationship between clusters. Distance, linkage, and dendrograms are three key concepts that drive the algorithms. And we have seen illustration of agglomerative and divisive algorithms within this space. In part two of this video, we cover the math and the detailed algorithm of agglomerative and divisive algorithms. We also explore how link matrix, also called as the Z matrix, is built and its features. We will look at cofinetic correlation, mathematics and properties. And finally, we will understand how to choose the right dendrogram quantitatively and the clustering algorithm for our data set. That's all for this video. Till next video, good luck to you.